Hey, problem solvers, Colfax Math here, the Practical Math channel. Today we're going to go over how to read a micrometer. Before I get started on the micrometer, let me just talk a little bit about measurement in general. Usually where you start in measurement is with a tape measure. And in the US, we're using inches and feet. This is accurate to a 16th of an inch, sometimes to a 32nd of an inch, but really only about a 16th of an inch. From the tape measure and 16ths of an inch, you go to a dial caliper where you're measuring thousandths of an inch. So on that dial caliper, you read off the bar here and the dial to get accurate to thousandths of an inch. And then from there, you go to a micrometer where you get to the ten thousandths of an inch. So we're going to go over how to read that micrometer, some of the problems you might see. I have some printouts so you could see it clearly because it's so hard to see this on a camera. So to start, I have a micrometer set. This is my micrometer set. It is a precision instrument set. These things should not be left laying around. They should always be stored in the case in a relatively moisture-free environment. This first little micrometer here is for zero to one inches. And then if you have something larger, you step up from the one to two inch micrometer. And then from there, the two to three inch micrometer. When you're zeroing these things out, there are these two little step blocks. So you could close the two inch micrometer in on that one inch little step block to zero it. And you could close in this larger micrometer on the two inch step block to zero it. If you look at these three different micrometers, the motion and movement on them are all the same. So the, the jaws are different, but this piece is all the same. So this one can only be used between two and three inches. And if it's the only one you have, you use this little step block inside the jaws there. Additionally, I also have a digital micrometer here. This thing's really easy to use. Um, the nice thing about a digital micrometer is you could change your units here between millimeters and inches. From here, let's go over to my desk. I'll put the camera over my shoulder and I'll really try and zoom in on the micrometers and how they work. Let's start with a digital micrometer. A lot of usability with this thing because you can easily convert from inches to millimeters. So to start with, this is on. So that's what turns it on. Here are your units right there. You can see inches in there. So it says inches versus millimeters. This right here is called the anvil that the spindle strikes against. And this is a thimble. So this is what opens it up. And then you close it down with this thimble. And then there's a ratcheting mechanism in here so it ratchets, so it's the same stop point every time. Let me open it up. We'll find the thickness of a piece of paper. We'll put a piece of paper in here. And then I'm going to use a thimble till it ratchets. And you could see that this piece of paper is 41, 41 ten thousandths of an inch, about four thousandths of an inch. 10 thousandths place. So as I look at this right here, here's the decimal point. This is the tens place, the hundreds place, the thousandths place, and then the 10 thousandths place. One thing I will say about these digital micrometers, um, you always want to turn them off. If you don't, the battery will go dead. No matter how many times I replace a battery on these things, um, it seems like one in a hundred times the battery's dead on me and I use my regular micrometer anyway. This is a really nice set uh, of micrometers. I'll take out the smallest one here. Micrometer here, again, this is the anvil that it goes against. This is a spindle. This is a sleeve or the barrel right here. And this is a thimble. You're going to bring it in close to closing, and then you're going to use a ratcheting mechanism here to stop it. Very similar to a torque wrench. This is a lock, so it won't move. And I know it's really hard to see these numbers right here, so I actually have a printout of what they look like. So there's a lot of different types of micrometers. There's standard, meaning inches. So if you're in Liberia, Burma, or the US, 
where an inch is, or if you're in the rest of the world, you use a metric micrometer. In addition to that, there are micrometers that are only accurate to the thousandths of an inch. And then there are some micrometers that are accurate to the ten thousandths of an inch. And they do that through a veneer scale right here. So these micrometers are in inches. And you can see that here, 0 to 1 inch, accurate to the ten thousandths of an inch. And then that's also why there are the Vermeer scale right here. That's spelled V-E-R-N-I-E-R, -E -E Vermeer scale. So on the barrel here, this right here is a hundred thousandths of an inch. So that first little one right there is this first little one right here. And this is a hundred thousandths of an inch. So what that looks like is 0 0.100. So even though we're in standard measurements, we're going to use all decimals. So if this is a hundred thou of an inch, I got one, two, three, four marks. That means each one of these is a quarter of the hundred thou. So this is 0 0.025, 0 0.05, 0 0.075, and 0 0.10. So if I end up right here, that's 0 0.125, 0 0.15, 0 0.175, 0 0.200, or 200 thousandths of an inch. So this right here, these are 25 thousandths of an inch. These numbers are 100 thousandths of an inch. And then these numbers right here are 1 thousandths of an inch. So this setting on this one, is exactly 0 0.200 because that zero is right on there. Let me grab another one. Okay, here's another example. So on, on the barrel here, I'm at a little bit past the two. I'm one line past the two. Oh, you can see that there. So remember, this is 0 0.200. This is 200 thou. Each one of these is 25 thou. This is a perfect lineup right here. So I have this two right here, which is 200 thousandths of an inch. This little mark right here, which is 25 thousandths of an inch. And then no single units at all. So this measurement right here is 225 thou. Again, we're not looking at the veneer on the top of it. We're only going to the thousandths of an inch, not the ten thousandths of an inch just yet. Here's another one. Why don't you see if you can figure this one out right here. Go ahead and pause the video. All right, I'll do it. So here's 0 0.225. So this is 25 thou, 50 thou. It's a perfect lineup. So it's 250 thou or 0 0.250. Take a look at another one. Again, here I am 25, 50, 75 thousandths of an inch past 200 thou. The zero is a perfect lineup. So this is 275 thou, or 275 thousandths of an inch. Another one here. On this one right here, this is putting it at 300 thou, 325, 350, 375. So this 300 is 300. This is 25, 50, 75. And then now the zero isn't lined up. I am 10 thousandths of an inch past that 75. So I'm 10 thousandths of an inch past that 75. So that's 385 thousandths of an inch. See that one more. Here's another one. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure this one out before I do it. Okay, hopefully you pause it and try to get it. This is 400 thou of an inch, 425. So I'm at 0. 0.400, that's at four. That little mark right there is 25. Then beyond that little mark, the 25 thousandths of an inch, that five lines up right there. So I'm an additional five thou over that. So I am at 430 thousandths of an inch. Go ahead and pause the video and do this one. 
Again, we're only working in thousandths of an inch, not ten thousandths of an inch. So on this one, hopefully you pause it and give it a try, I'm at 400 thou, 25, 50, 75 thousandths of an inch, and then I am 5, 10, 11, 12, 12 thou passes 75. So 12 thousandths of an inch passes 75, and I can see that 75 mark completely. So that means I am 487 thousandths of an inch on the micrometer right here. Same thing, give this one a try. 300 thousandths of an inch. I never saw one mark here. I am one, two, three, four thousandths of an inch past the 300. So I have 300 thousandths. There's no little mark here at all. So that's going to be, on that it's going to be zero, zero, zero. And then I'm one, two, three, four, point zero, zero, four, or 304 thousandths of an inch. On this one, I have 500 thousandths of an inch. This one's a little tricky here. I have 25 thousandths of an inch. You could almost see the next mark, but you can't quite see it. So I'm using the thimble markings here and I come around 15, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So on that I'm 24. So this is 549 thousandths of an inch. I am actually one one thousandths of an inch in front of that little mark. And that's why you could just barely see it. So this thimble that goes around, right, these marks right here, let me see if I can get it to focus, these marks right here, there are 25 of them because one full revolution on this is equal to one mark here. So one full revolution on this, this thing goes around one full time, it is 25 thousandths of an inch because this is 25 thousandths of an inch right here. These aren't quite as visible as the last one, but they do look a little bit more like a micrometer. Uh, Again, pause the video and do both of these and then check your work against mine. So here's 100 thou, 125 thou right there. So that's a 125 thou and then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, the 14 mark lines up. So I add those together. So this top one is equal to 0.139. So that top one's 0.139. This bottom one here is 200, 225, 250. So I have the 200 thou from that too. Two of the tick marks are 25 thou each. And then I am 21, 22, 23 marks past. So because that's 23 marks past, it's 23 thou. So this bottom one here is 273 thousandths of an inch. This one right here is right off of a micrometer, and I know they're hard to see, but right here I'm at 600 thou, 625, 650, and then that zero mark lines right up. So this one is 650 thousandths of an inch. This one right here, I'm at 100 thou right there. There is no tick mark past it. So I'm at 100 thou, and then that 10 mark is past it right there. So this is 110 thousandths of an inch. The next step is the veneer calibration on the top, and that brings you to the 10 thousandths of an inch. If you look on here, there are 10 markings here and 11 on here, so only one of those will line up. So you can see right here, this one lines up perfectly, and it's the 8, and that would make it 110 thousandths of an inch, or 1,108 ten thousandths of an inch. And you can see on that 8, this one's a little bit above that mark, and this one's a little bit below that mark, and that's why you know it's an 8, because it lines up perfectly on that mark. So that's how you use a micrometer, a very useful tool if you're going to work on any, any sort of machinery at all. Measurement is kind of the foundation of so many different careers. 
Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd like to hear your comments below. If you use a micrometer, where you use a micrometer, uh, and if this video is helpful. So if it was, go ahead and give it a like. And if you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. Thank you for watching.